Praise you know, God. our our Phoenix boy that ha has the organization in the high schools and the colleges, yeah. um, Charlie, uh, Charlie Kirk, uh, Kirk, Kirk. Kirk. Charlie right? Kirk. What's his organization? TP USA, Turning Point. Turning Point USA, yeah. right? And uh, they just had in in San Francisco at the university they just had the female swimmer that had the male put on a dress and swim against her. Because he was like number 500 when he swam against the man. Yeah. Don't get me started. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably get into that in a minute in the message. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see where God goes. But she's been outspoken against it. I mean, how stupid. This is, this is moronic. The United States of America has gone moronic. Yeah. It's and it's time that the morons go. Yeah. No more morons in America. No Leave. You're not welcome here. Bye-bye. Right. Now, I want you to go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And when we come to Romans chapter 1, we find one of the most brilliant texts in the New Testament. The entire New Testament is brilliant, but this particular text is simply genius. And when you come to Romans chapter 1, you find what the world will be at the end of the age. And in Romans chapter 1, verse 18, Paul begins to describe mankind when mankind has finally reached the end, the fullness of man without God. And he says in verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Circle the word hold. The word hold is the Greek word kateko. It's a compound of two words. The word kate describes something that is coming down, it's dominating, it is subjugating. The second part of the word is echo, which means to have, to hold, or to embrace. But when you compound the two words together, it is someone who wraps their arms around something. They're not ignorant of it. They have it. They know it. They've read it. They've been exposed to it. But because they don't like what they've been exposed to, they hold it down. They suppress it. And here we find at the end of the age, society as a whole will say, Put a lid on that. Don't let that truth get out. Stop that story. Stop that truth. Society will try to silence the church. It's not that they're ignorant of it. They are very well aware of it. They just try to put a lid on it so that it won't get out where it will affect the thinking of people. And then in verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it to them. Which means every person has the witness of God in his own heart. But then look at verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So verse 20 says, even nature itself witnesses to God. Then verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. But notice at the first of verse 21, because that when they knew God, this word knew, the Greek word gnosko, which here describes a general kind of knowledge, or Paul says there was a time when society at large at least had a respect for the things of God. They may not have all been born again, but they had a general respect. They were a God-fearing society. And they even, but then they came to a moment when they glorified him not as God, which means it no longer became popular to talk about God or to focus on God. And in fact, the verse says, neither were thankful. And wow, this is powerful. Because in Greek, it is the word akaristos. The word karistos means to be thankful. If you put an A on the front, it describes a people who were once very, very thankful, but now that A has canceled that, it has reversed the condition. It's a people who were once God-fearing, thankful to God, but now they think that is no longer popular, that's no longer the way we're going to go. So God has kind of been put to the side, and even the recognition of God is no longer the thing to do. This is not a part of our progressive way of thinking. So God is put to the side, and notice what happens when people cease to glorify God and cease to be thankful. And by the way, when people cease to be thankful, they become entitled. And that also is in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul describes entitlement in that chapter. But he says they became vain 
in their imaginations. The word vain, the Greek word metaios, it describes something that is utterly wasted. The word imaginations is a form of the Greek word logismos. It's where you get the word for logical thinking. It describes the mind, the faculty of the mind, their logic. Their logic becomes ill-affected. They become wasted in their conclusions. And he says their foolish heart was darkened. Well, the word heart describes the human heart. It's the Greek word cardia. It's where you get the word for cardiac or cardiac arrest. It's the word cardia. So you have to stop for a moment and say, what does the heart do? The heart pumps. And what does the heart pump? Pumps blood. How much of your body has blood in it? Every part of your body has blood in it. In fact, that blood is being regularly circulated through your body because your heart is pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping. And now Paul says, the heart of society at the end of the age will no longer pump blood like the human heart would do, but the heart of society will begin to pump darkness and pump darkness and pump darkness and pump darkness until all of society will be touched by this delusionary darkness. Then he says in verse 23, all the while professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The word professing would be better translated alleging themselves to be. It doesn't mean that they are, it's just how they're projecting themselves. They're declaring that they're the leaders of a new kind of liberal, progressive way of thinking. We're turning from the primitive way of thinking of the past. We're letting loose of that anchor and we're going to forge forward into a new world. We're going to frame a new society, a progressive world, alleging themselves to be wise. And the word wise here, the Greek word Sophia, which means they declare themselves to be the uppercut of society, just a little bit better than everybody else. We are the thinkers of a new world. But Paul says instead they became fools. The word fools is the Greek word moreno, and you can guess what word we get from that. It's where you get the word for morons. <laughs> now this is the Holy Spirit speaking through Paul, and Paul writes and says, they will allege that they are the thinkers of a new world, the uppercut, the brilliant thinkers of a new society, but in fact, their thinking has become so wasted that really, they become morons in their conclusions. That's a literal translation. Just listen to the news, you'll find a bunch of morons. But anyway, the, the swimmer, she's at the thing, and she did get to speak, but when she was coming out of speaking, she got swore. By a bunch of transvestites, transgenders, and, and then other people. Though. What's, and this is what's crazy to me. Mostly girls, women, who were screaming out. She got punched. A guy in a dress punched her right in the face. But the girls, why are, what's wrong with girls? Girls are screaming at her. Male, what, what's their, what are they saying? Trans rights are women's rights. Whatever. What are they saying? Trans rights. Well, that too. But they were also saying... Male wi women are women. Oh, yeah, yeah. Male women are women. Male wi Okay, you need to be put in a mental institution. Okay, a male is a male and a female is a female. The Bible says when they got to the tomb, the stone was already rolled away. I said the stone was already rolled away. And it says that they went and they went into the tomb, but they found not the body of Jesus. And they were greatly perplexed about this. And as they're standing, wondering, what is, what's this mean? What's going on? So suddenly, two men stood there in blinding, shining white apparel. Somebody say angels. angels. They, well, why are their clothes aglow? Why are they glowing? Because they just came from the presence of God. God is light. Remember when Moses met with God on Mount Sinai? And he was in the presence of God. He came out of the presence. He was glowing. So much so that people were like, whoa, no, cover your face, cover your face. God doesn't want us to want the glory covered. God wants us to want the glory. Yes. And it's fullness. Yes. Gleaming apparel. They had an interesting question. 
to the women. Why do you seek the living among the dead? What are you doing here? What do you get to grave for? Why do you seek the living among the dead? And I'm here to tell you this morning, that's the state of every human being who has not given their heart to Jesus Christ. They're seeking life where there's nothing more than death. They're going to the bars. They're doing drugs. They're, they're getting drunk. They're having either premarital sex or out of marital sex. They're, they're, they're trying to find life in things that are nothing but death. There is no life in these things. Money. They're, they're, they're just working, working, working. They just to do they're trying to make it money, 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 money. There's no life. Religion, they try meditation and new age religions and witchcraft and sorcery and even so-called Christian religion. But there's no life. You can't even tell. Billy Graham used to say at the end of every crusade, those of us, that most of us here are old enough to remember when Billy Graham had a crusade, all three networks carried it. Christopher and Tommy going, three? What do you mean? There's like 300. There's like 3,000. Back then, there were three. Three. ABC, NBC, CBS. Oh, and PBS. Oh, PBS. <laughs> Nobody watched that. You did. Of course, Cindy did. Um, you know, it's a little... They used to have good music and stuff. Anyway, PBS. But primarily three. But all three would carry his crusades. All three. That was the America I grew up in, and that's the America we need to get back to. Amen. Amen. At the end of every crusade, Billy Graham would say, Call in, we've got some literature. We want to send you. Cool. If somebody want to pray with you, we have literature. His son said the same thing today. I love it. He goes, call that number. There's somebody there that wants to pray with you. And we have some literature we want to send you. Pretty good invitation. Not really. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, God, for wives. As iron sharpens iron. It's grind away. But we need it. Somebody's got to do it. We need it. That's right. Someone's got to do the dirty work. Right. And then he would say, and go to church on Sunday. Yeah. You can't even say that anymore. Half the churches are flaming faggots. <laughs> the person behind the pulpit's a flaming faggot. Yeah. Or worse, transgender. Christianity used to be the religion of America. Now it's transgenderology. And climatology. That's a biggest hoax. Man can't affect the climate of the planet. Have you lost your mind? The planet will kill you, but you can't hurt it. The planet will take you out in an earthquake, a hurricane, a tornado. These poor people in these tornadoes. You can't affect the climate of the planet. God made earth to cleanse itself. Wind and rain and seasons. You can't hurt it. Now be good stewards of it. That's why God said if you're a farmer, you plant six years, and the seventh year you let it rest and let it produce on its own. Just out of the natural, let the other stuff die and fall on the ground. Let it re-nourish the soil. Yeah, be good stewards. That's not what we're talking about. Man can't hurt the crop. Well, all the CO2, all the emissions from all the automobiles, fossil fuels. No, it's destroying the planet because it's the, 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 the smoke that comes out of the tailpipe is polluting the air. Oh, shut up, you ignorant moron. Let me ask you a question. How many automobiles are in Europe? I don't know. Ten million? How long have they been there? Since, I don't know, maybe 1920? Every day? Riding up and down all over Europe. Spewing out carbon-14, well, not carbon-14, whatever well, that junk is. Spewing it out, right? In all of history, 
has the pollution from automobiles over a hundred years every day ever once caused such a such a mess in the sky that the airports of Europe had to be shut down? No, not once. In a hundred years of 10 million cars running every single day, not once has there been so much pollution in the air caused by those automobiles and the factories and everything else that man does that ever caused one single plane to not be able to land in Europe. Oh, but about 20 years ago, a little teeny volcano Way up, not even in Europe, it was in Iceland. Way up above, way above by the Arctic Circle in, the, in Iceland, that big giant slab of ice where there's an active volcano. Spew volcanic ash into the air for one week, not a hundred years. One week, and that one itty bitty teeny volcano caused all the airports of Europe to shut down. One volcano in one week will pollute the air more than 10 million cars in 100 years. But God cleared the air from that one volcano, didn't he? Because about a week later, all the airports opened back up again. Don't give me this man-made garbage. It's a lie. It's a denial that God's in control. This planet will only be destroyed when God destroys it. So quit lying. Quit telling our poor children that they only have 10 years left before the whole world is destroyed. Of course, they said that 30 years ago. Remember Al Gore said, by the year 2000, all the beaches are going, all, all the coastlines are going to be 30 feet underwater. Right. Well, they're still there. Yeah. I grew up in Florida. That was uh, 50 years ago. I can get on a plane right now and go, Clearwater Beach looks exactly the same as it did 50 years ago. The water has not come up, not an inch. Not an inch more. The beach is just as wide now as it was back then. It's garbage. It's a lie. It's a lie. God's in control. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and the notification bell. And God bless you for it.